I'm Joel Chasnoff, and welcome to FIDF Live. Today, we're on the border between Israel and Lebanon. At any given moment, the IDF is defending six arenas. There's the border with Syria, the border with Jordan, Egypt, Gaza, Lebanon, and cyber, which is a new arena to defend. Today, we'll meet the soldiers who defend this border and learn about the unique challenges they face. We're on the northern border, about as far north as you can go. With us is Lieutenant Avi from the IDF Liaison Unit. You've actually met Lieutenant Avi before on a previous episode of FIDF Live. Thank you for joining us. And first of all, tell us exactly where we are, Lieutenant Avi, and why you chose this location to speak about the northern border. So we're standing here in the outskirts of Matula, which is the northernmost settlement in Israel. You can see behind us is Mount Dov, which is the westernmost ridge of uh, Mount Hermon. And the reason I choose, chose to take you here is because this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful views of the border and also allows us a good view of the area. And tell us where exactly is Israel and where is Lebanon? Because we can see both from where we are right now. Okay, so between Metula and Lebanon, you have approximately 20 meters from the, from the edges of the, of the settlement. And it is very, um, the border runs very close to the, to the settlement in multiple places. And if we see here, if you look just behind me, you can see those settlements up there. That's already Lebanon. And in these cars that are driving on the highway, that's also a Lebanese highway. Driving up here, I just want to reiterate that the homes in Metula in Israel are literally 10, 20 meters away from the border with Lebanon. So tell us a little about the communities that are living in this area. I know there are many communities living up here. So there's a great diversity among these communities. You have farther down there a Muslim settlement of Rajar, um, which are Muslims from Syria, actually. And you have uh, all types of Jewish settlements, mainly focused on agriculture, in addition to Druze uh, villages, and also a number of Christian uh, villages that are along the border. And what are some of the unique challenges that the IDF faces in guarding this particular border? I know it's different than some of the under other arenas that the IDF currently defends. What's unique about being up here? So the Lebanese border is the most tense border that, uh, that Israel has, much more than any other. Um, specifically because Hezbollah, the major enemy of Israel, um, is standing right along the border. All the time, standing on the blue line, is keeping watch. The situation is so tense that you can feel it, feel it in the air. It also means that there's constant uh, disturbances, whether it be rock throwing, whether it be swearing at soldiers, um, that really causes this, this border to be the most uh, volatile. And I want to use that as a jumping off point. Very recently, we had a number of individuals from Lebanon try to penetrate the fence, come into Israel. Tell us what you can about that incident and how the IDF reacted. So it's interesting, that incident was two Sudanese nationals that Hezbollah probably sent them to come into Israel. They're actually looking for refugee. And that also um, emphasizes the weak economic situation we have in Lebanon that Hezbollah is trying to capitalize on in order to use the Lebanese civilians or Sudanese you know, nationals to, to take advantage of them to try to come into Israel. And to do the dirty work exactly. for them. So defending this border clearly requires a different type of training. Soldiers need to be on the lookout and prepared for other kinds of threats. What kind of training do the, tra do the soldiers need to go through in order to be on this border? And what kind of alerts, you know, what kind of readiness do they need to be under in order to defend it properly? Okay, so the Lebanese border is different from any other front because each hour you have a different incident whether it be a, a touch on the fence or something happening, but it's always happening. So aside from the, the intense physical, uh, physical training they have to do before they come to the border, um, we also have more in-depth uh, classes, I guess you could say lectures, so that they fully understand you know, who the enemy is, they fully understand Hezbollah, they fully understand the, the meaning behind this, uh, this area, so that they can also, also the soldiers, the infantry soldiers on the ground, so that they understand the meaning behind their action. It is possible to drive along this border and see Hezbollah along the border with photographs, with, uh, with cameras, with flags. Of course, they're always standing there, they're always ready. Um, I'll say you know that it's Hezbollah because no uh, normal Lebanese civilian would spend his free time taking pictures of, uh, of IDF soldiers. 
Um, that being said, also the IDF is, is prepared and ready, of course. And because of that close proximity between the Israeli civilians and Hezbollah, means that the IDF just has to be that much more prepared. With civilians from both sides living so close to the border, is there ever interaction? So there isn't really any direct interaction. Um, but right now we're in the midst of an olive harvest by Lebanese farmers that actually crosses into Israeli territory. The IDF gives special permission to, facilitated with UNIFIL, in order for them to cross into Israel to harvest their olives. Well, Lieutenant Avi, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and so insightful for our viewers at home. Thank you so much for spending time with us today on FIDF Live. Have you ever been to a naval base? Right now, we're going to get an inside look at what it's like to be a soldier in Israel's Navy, including a visit to the base in the north responsible for security along Israel's northern coastline. And just for FIDF supporters, we're going to get a sneak peek at Bad Khel Hayam, the naval training base where cadets and future officers learn how to serve and lead. Now we begin with the big question, how do soldiers prepare to defend Israel's coastline against the many outside threats. We're joined now by Captain Itai. He is the commander of the Advanced Command Program here at the Naval Training Base, where they train the next generation of Naval commanders. So, Captain Itai, thank you for joining us. Tell me about yourself and your role. So, formerly I was the ship's captain in the Israeli Navy. Gaza Strip took part in dozens of operations, including Guardians of the Wall and Black Belt. Today, I train the future commanders of, in of Israel, making sure they become the greatest leaders they ever could. Tell me about the base where we are right now, the Navy Training Base. So we're standing in the Israeli naval base for training, the gate to all training of the warriors in the Navy. Here, they train the fundamentals of which they will use to serve them in fighting, protecting the gas rigs, protecting Israeli civilians, protecting Israeli shores, and keeping the safety of movement at sea. Tell me about your experience as a naval patrol boat commander along the Gaza coastline. What was that like? So commanding in the Gaza coast means protecting the Israeli people from Hamas terrorists, its armed vessels, its attacking divers, and making sure that no one penetrates the Israeli border and that the Israeli people are safe. You participated in Operation Guardian of the Walls. I'd like to hear about that. Participating in Guardians of the Walls meant seeing Hamas terrorists attack Israel. We could feel the tension, we could feel the heat, we could see missiles flying above our heads. It meant a lot for me to see my crew defend the maritime space and to see ourselves, the Army, the ground patrol units, the Air Force units and the Navy combining our efforts to cease every attack. Let's go back to your current role. What do future commanders need to go through so that they'll be ready to lead troops into battle. Commanding in the maritime space, you need exceptional tools. Thus, we work on the cadets' social interactions experience. We train them and make them mentally stronger. We have resilience programs, combat professionalizing programs, in order to make sure that every cadet becomes a successful leader. Commanding everywhere is hard. Commanding in the maritime space is much harder. To the extent that you can, what courses are under your command here at the Naval Training Base? Under my command are four courses. We have the chiefs, engineers, the experts of the machinery world in the patrol boats. We have the deputy commanders of patrol boats. Learn how to handle threats and protect the Israeli shore. We have the patrol defense boats. They learn everything about patrol and bay operations. And pilot boat commanders learn everything about the maritime space and how to guide and help other ships. Last question, Captain Itai. It's a bit personal. Tell me about your family. Particularly, I heard you have a special connection with the Navy. So coming from a Holocaust survivor's family, me and my brothers feel obligated to protect Israeli shores and coast and the people. Both my brothers and I are officers in the Army. 
My grandfather, who was also a Holocaust survivor, served in the Navy. He served in France and brought the ships to Israel. I feel a deep connection to the Israeli Navy and I just love serving here. And it brings the narrative full circle. The commanders are the ones who protect Israel now, but also guarantee the safety of Israel in the future by leading, by teaching, by commanding. Captain Itai, thank you so much for being with us here on FIDF Live. Thank you so much for having me. The area that we serve includes a lot of small remote villages of Israeli civilians and because it's really close to the border it can be hard for other medical teams to get there so we're here to provide them with the medical care that they need. And as you can see, that's Metula right there, Israel's northmost city. It's very close to the border. So when those civilians need help, we respond a lot of the times. And also, as you can see, the border with Lebanon, the fence, is right next to it, is very close to us. And obviously, if any military people need help, we're also there to respond. About a month ago, there on Rosh Hashanah, there was a large car crash. A car totally flipped over into a bank on the side of the road. It was very chaotic. There were five people, five patients who needed our help. We were the first ALS providers to get there, and it was really chaotic. There were a lot of ambulances that ended up coming. I found myself running really from ambulance to ambulance, making sure, helping out the paramedics, making sure every patient got what they needed. And even though everyone was running around ambulances and it was chaotic and overwhelming, we made sure that every patient got the care that they needed. I chose to be a combat medic because I have a really strong interest in biology and working with my hands. And my dad's a doctor, so I always had the medical background. It's something that just always interested me. To me, being a combat medic means always being on the top of my game, making sure that I'm on top of the material and I know exactly what to do when something happens and to always be ready to jump on the ambulance. The northern border was something I'd spoken to another lone soldier about who had served here right before me. She finished the army right before I got here and she said this was a super interesting area with amazing, amazing people, interesting work, meaningful work, and she really recommended that I come here. So it was honestly my number one request, and it, it worked out. This is our ambulance, and come I'll give you guys a tour. So this is the ambulance. Um, this is where the paramedic sits usually, at the head of the patient. This is the where the patient lies. This is the monitor where we could take all sorts of vitals. This is where we keep all sorts of medicines and also equipment to start an IV and fluids. Every week and after almost every call, the crew both replenishes any equipment that we use and we every week we check the equipment to make sure everything's still working, everything is still up to date and nothing is expired, no medicine is expired. We're trained to deal with and we have the equipment for both civilian emergencies and military emergencies. We practice a lot in the base to be prepared for any kind of a situation. It can be a medical or operational uh, situation that they can go to. Uh, and we learn a lot from the past to be prepared for what can come in the future. Uh, so we teach them a lot about what, what used to be in this area. As a commander, my job is to be on control on all the occasions that can uh, happen in the area. Sometimes there can be many situations going at the same time and I need to be on control. I guide the, med the medics in the field uh, about the way they can treat the injuries that uh, they can uh, see at field. We cooperate a lot with the hospitals in the area to be prepared for any kind of situation together with them and a lot of the time we come to the hospital together, the paramedics and the medics, and we learn from them about the uh, equipment that they have and the abilities that they have, and they learn from us about what we can do in field. 
Being a paramedic is a wonderful job, specifically uh, in the IDF. We're taking care uh, not only uh, soldiers, but civilians too. We're taking care of Arabs, Jews, and any other person, no matter what his uh, religion, culture, we are there to any medical situation. It's a lot of responsibility on our shoulders, but we do our best for any uh, person in any situation. I feel amazing to entering to civilian house with the IDF uniform. Uh, the feeling is uh, outstanding.